Welcome back to Microsoft Build Into Focus. This segment is about building collaborative apps to thrive in the modern workplace. I'm your host, Karawana Gatimu. For the next 45 minutes, we'll be showing you some exciting demos and code to help you with your collaboration scenarios. We'll also speak with customers and partners who are already building collaborative apps. Let's hop in. This is Into Focus. I'm here with Bragu Sareen, one of the early leaders of Teams. I've had the pleasure of working with you for some time now, Bragu. It's great to be here, Caruana, and with all the developers out there. That's great. You know, I want to just hop directly in. What exactly is a collaborative app, and what does it mean to create one? Absolutely. So a collaborative app enables a team of people with different roles across geographies to come together to accomplish a task. And, and you know, these collaborative apps, uh, in the collaborative app, getting the job done is at the heart. So for a minute, imagine you're a developer of uh, an ISV that builds DevOps. And here you are with this application, and one of your users gets a notification at 2 a.m. Not that it's ever happened before. <laughs> and you get a notification, but when the developer wakes up, you've also built your app to be collaborative in the sense that it brought together all the content, all the data related to that life site via a bot inside a channel in Teams. And guess what? It also enabled synchronous collaboration by creating a bridge for a meeting and everybody else that's needed to solve that issue is right there. I love that. You know, it's really bringing everyone together to be effective at the same time. So really, I mean, obviously we're at Microsoft Build. So how should developers think about enabling collaboration in their apps? Do they just turn this on? Is there more depth that they really need to bring to that scenario? Awesome question. So there are a number of Teams platform capabilities and you could, you know, just take those, integrate them in your application, whether you're a line of business developer, whether you are building an ISV or a system integrator, they're there. But a, um, what it provides is an opportunity for developers to really rethink, reimagine what that application means when you take advantage of a chat or collab capability and enable synchronous collab, uh, asynchronous collaboration or synchronous collaboration leveraging Teams meetings extensibility. Absolutely. So together or apart, you're enabling something that is helping people be more effective. Exactly. Right? exactly. I love that. I love that. So, but you know what I'm going to ask you next, right? What should an IT pro be thinking about, about managing collaborative apps in their environment, the ones that come from Microsoft Teams? And I'm smiling because, Karwan, I know exactly where that question is coming from. You used to be an IT admin in your past life. Right. And so for IT pros, we deliver capabilities on two dimensions. It's about visibility as well as control. On visibility, admins can see information such as what data the app is going to use and on permissions it needs to run. And on control, admins can manage app availability in their orgs as well as manage the user experience, choosing proactively to install apps. For the Teams Admin Center, when we were building it from the beginning, one thing I just wanted to share is at the core, when we were imagining it, it is about empowering the admin to create some magical, powerful experiences. What do I mean by that? I mean, it's easy to say magical experiences. But um, so for a minute, imagine you have someone in your organization that's in marketing. You, as an IT admin, can create templates that are customized with the apps, workflows. Or if you're a retail colleague, imagine being able, when that retail colleague opens up Teams, right there they have all the floor plans for the store. In case they have a question, corporate can answer right away. Or, or you complete the task, you publish the, what the display looks like and right away, other people can give you kudos and thumbs up for how gorgeous it looks. Yeah, I love that. You know, and of course, uh, in my former life, I worked in a large organization that lots of retail places. But what you're talking about is that, that information that's so uh, there, right there. So it's, I love that. A few days ago, folks, I spoke with Shiva Ganesan from Tata Consultancy Services. He's the global head of the Microsoft Business Unit. And we talked about how they're developing collaborative apps for their own experiences, but also for other organizations. Let's take a look at some of that conversation. Hi, Siva. Thanks for joining us. Glad to be here, Priko. Siva, first, I just want to open by saying thank you very much for you and your team's partnership 
on first onboarding TCS onto Microsoft Teams, leveraging chat, collab meetings, and then using Teams as the hub for collaboration, building collab apps on the Teams platform. Uh, do you mind sharing your journey with us? Sure, Brigo. Uh, as you know, we've embraced Microsoft 365 and Teams as the next-gen productivity suite across almost 370,000 monthly active users on Teams today. Now, we've been on a journey not just spanning the basic functionality, but indeed integrating it with line of business applications for ourselves and our customers. You'll be happy to know there's more than 10 applications that are already in use, and uh, two of them in excess of 300,000 monthly active users. Siva, sorry for interrupting you, but the two applications combined monthly active usage is 300,000? Oh, no, it's each of them. So wow. it's really a lot of usage, yeah. So the types of apps we have built, right? So if you uh, look for a few examples, one is a, an application that helps us look for experts within our organization. And that's very handy when it comes to assembling our teams. The second is in terms of how we integrate from a line of business perspective with our enterprise applications on, on say, service management, helps for speedier resolution time. Now, um, surely it's not all work. There's also good fun stuff. So for a parent group, you know, believe it or not, there's a food ordering app as well. So kind of spice it up a little. Now, extend this to different industries we're working on. Let me take just two examples, retail manufacturing. So much of the industry use cases coming right. alive from a team's extension perspective. I think that's really where the game is headed. So TCS works with thousands of customers across the globe. What market opportunity and patterns are you seeing from these customers when it comes to collaborative apps built on uh, Teams platform? So there's a tremendous opportunity to build these collaborative apps, right? And the thing re really is about how do you extend Microsoft Teams and integrate line of business applications with it. Now, when you do this, uh, employees get empowered because they're all operating of one canvas teams. Right. They don't have to switch context all the time. And you can rather focus on the experience and the transaction on hand. You need to deliver to the end customer. So that's really the, uh, you know, uh, the USP, if I may, of how the line of business apps, the collab apps, as you've put it, combine forces with teams. Absolutely. And so from the hundreds of examples that you have, can you share any specific stories of collab apps that Tata Consultancy Services has built for the customers? Sure. Uh, let me take two examples. One, a large Canadian bank uh, who during the pandemic had to connect with customers. And as right. we all know, that was really a pent up need for most organizations. Right. Taking advantage of Teams, secure video channels, allowing for documents and stuff like that to be shared. And also integrating with CRM. It provided, I think, quite the right digital humanized experience for interactions between the bank and its end consumers. Uh, switch gears, let's go to Europe, a large uh, telecommunications giant. Frontline workers, field service, need to partner with a larger ecosystem of suppliers and, and uh, providers. Again, Teams as a channel allowing for larger digital collaboration and not just the basic functionality. So I think two great examples from, like you said, hundreds of what have come by. Absolutely, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing to see by geo, by industry, by job function, uh, the, the different scenarios that are making uh, people's work more efficient. And so as we transition from remote work to hybrid work, do you see these patterns actually staying? No, that's the beauty of it. I think it's no longer a transient phenomenon that you know happened only during the pandemic. I think as the normalcy unfolds, we see examples like that of an Indian retailer for whom the audit process, a traditional one, where auditors have to travel and you know be physically present at the site of audit. That whole process has been streamlined and lubricated through the video capabilities of teams. But it's not just a conduit, it's also um, improving or uh, you know augmenting the extensibility of the audit because you supplement it with checklists and the like, which are also native to teams and therefore enhance also the quality and the efficacy of the audit. So examples like these, I think are here to stay and more will come by. It's amazing to see how TCS helps an organization from envisioning to building and then deploying these, what historically we've always been talking about as digital transformation. I think it's here to stay. And so it's good to actually hear you say it's here to stay. And so thank you very much uh, for being here and, and uh, talking to me about it.
Great. You're welcome, Prabhu. Thank you, and uh, look forward to even a deeper partnership in the years to come. Absolutely. Thank you. What a time to be a systems integrator or a developer in this space. I feel like the opportunity is pretty endless. It's yes. tremendous. Exactly. Um, and so it's, it's, it's a great time to be here. Um, and uh, where would you call seeing 10 years of digital transformation all happening in a set of two years, and we're only getting started. I know, right? And we have the ecosystem, right, to support people taking advantage of this. I think that's huge. This opportunity is real. It's right now, and even though it's magical, it's, it's completely true of what's happening, and it's being done on the Microsoft Teams platform. You're absolutely right. And there are a number of ISVs that are making significant progress, fueling growth by building collaborative apps on the Teams platform. Satya shared yesterday uh, this slide where there are several partners, each generating more than a million dollars in ARR, annual recurring revenue from commercial customers. Wow, that impact is real. It is. So we have a lot of developers who are new to collaborative apps, but how do people begin building them? You know, right now I think we should hand it over to Alex Powell and Paul Goodday uh, to show us just that. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm super excited today to show you how to build these kinds of great experiences in Teams. I'm Alex Powell, a Principal Design Manager on Teams, and I'm joined here today by Paul Gilday, who's a Senior Product Manager on Fluent UI. And today, Paul and I will talk you through just how easy it is to build a Teams application using the latest toolkits and Visual Studio Code extensions, and how to make your app look really great inside of Teams. And whether you're an ISV or an LOB app developer, everything we're going to show you is available for coding today, so you can get started building amazing Teams apps. Paul, are you excited to show us some code today? Yeah, totally. Can't wait to see what you have. OK, awesome. So now let's imagine you are in charge of building a Teams retail application called Contozo. The Contozo app enables its users to connect and collaborate on common retail scenarios. So these are things like product launches, sales and analytics, and supply chain management. And it really acts as a central hub for the company. So here we can see the Contozo Home tab, which brings together content from a number of different data services and connectors including Viva Insights and Power BI, giving users a complete view of relevant information for their day. So this tab has been designed using Microsoft's design system called Fluent and its component library called Fluent UI, which enables you to build Teams applications that look and feel integrated, but give you the power to retain your own brand. The Fluent components are responsive down to mobile views, like the one you can see on the right here. They're fully accessible, and they come with a design token system that enables you to apply custom colors, shapes, elevation, and font styles, enabling you to easily style your app to match your company's own style system. OK, Paul, so now that we've seen this, how would you go about building this kind of app for Teams? All right, awesome. Thanks, Alex. So I have my developer environment already set up. I have VS Code with the Teams toolkit already installed. And this toolkit is essential for building Teams applications because it allows you to build, debug, provision, and deploy your Teams app to Azure. Now, I'm, I've already hit F5, and so we're running live here. And so what I'm going to walk you through is this dashboard experience that Alex, uh, that Alex presented to us. So I'm just going to add a little bit of configuration to my view here. And then I'm going to talk about the, uh, the technology that I'm using, the UI technology that I'm using to make this happen. So I'm using a mixture of Teams UI and Fluent UI React. And so Teams UI gives me the capability for low code configuration for high level layouts and for UX patterns. And Fluent UI React gives me the control and the customization that I need for building custom components. And so here you can see I have a dashboard full of data visualization, some custom components. And as Alex said beforehand, all of this is responsive. So as I resize my window here, you can see all of that content, resize, and fill the screen, which is super cool. The other thing that Alex also mentioned was that these component libraries come with themeability in mind. And so when I change the, the theme inside of Teams here from a light mode to a dark mode, all of the UI automatically updates. And if your end users have specific contrast requirements, we even have high contrast theme support out of the box as well. Super cool. Now, we also talked about responsive, right? And so we can take the same exact experience and we can bring it over to a phone. And so let me just bring this up on the phone. And you can see here all of that same UI that we built here on our desktop is now available on the phone. 
Okay. So what's, uh, what's next on the agenda, Alex? Thanks, Paul. That looks absolutely amazing. Okay, now let's take a look at how teams can seamlessly connect data and workflows across teams and enable collaboration with the Contoso app without having to leave the chat or the channel that you're in. So here we join Daniela, who's a regional store manager working the Contoso app on a new product launch and is looking at the Contoso supply chain dashboard to see information on the new product that's being launched. So she wants to share information on the new product with her team, and so she uses a new feature called Share to Teams that she can access from the overflow menu that you can see here. So when she clicks on it, it opens a task module which has been seeded with an adaptive card displaying product information taken from the dashboard. And here she can enter information in the description field and select the channel that she wants to share the information with from the channel picker before sending. Okay, Paul, so how would you go about building something similar to this in Teams? Okay, awesome. So I'm back in VS Code, and what I'm gonna use is the Teams SDK for this, and specifically the sharing capability. So I'm already inside of a menu item here, and all I need to do is use the sharing capability, call the share web content API, give a URL to the content that we wanna share, and that's it. Teams takes care of the rest for me. So I'm gonna hop back over here, and so for this example, I'm gonna click on that same menu item. I'm gonna click Share. Teams already provides this UI for me. And here, I can specify the, uh, the, channel that I, the channel or chat that I wanna add this content to, and then hit Share, and off you go. That's awesome. Okay, now let's take a deeper dive into more Teams collaboration features for chats and channels. So now, back in the retail scenario, we're gonna join one of Daniela's colleagues, Ray, who's an assistant store manager working on the new product launch, he receives a notification that Daniela has shared some information in the product launches channel that's been generated by the Contoso app. So he clicks on the Toast notification that takes him directly into the product launches channel where he can see the post created by Daniela and an adaptive card showing information on the product being launched. So Ray now wants to create a task for the product launch for his team, so he uses what's called a message action that he can access from the overflow menu here to create the new Contoso task. That then opens a task module where the description field already contains information taken from the message that has been extracted via the Graph API, saving Ray time and effort in filling out the task description. All he has to do is select the due date, the priority, and the task assignee, in this case, Karen, before clicking on Create. And the Contoso bot takes care of the rest. It posts a new adaptive card to the channel, which shows the task information, and it also automatically notifies Karen that she's been assigned the new task. And one of the really cool things about the Adaptive Card Framework is that it enables the Contoso app to show different content to different users using what's called role-based views. So for instance, here we can see that Ray on the left has additional editing capabilities on the card as the creator of the task compared to Karen on the right, who's been assigned the task. Okay, so we just showed you how Adaptive Cards, message actions and task modules can really make collaboration in chats and channels a fully integrated experience with the Contoso app. So Paul, I think you can probably guess what I'm gonna ask you next. You bet. How would you show us how this works in code? Awesome. And so what I'm gonna focus on specifically is link unfurling with adaptive cards. And the easiest way to do link unfurling is to build a bot. And the easiest way to, easiest way to build a bot is with the Teams Toolkit extension. And I can build a bot with simply two clicks. All I have to do is click Add Capabilities, click Bot, and that's it and then this gets scaffolded out into my project. So I've already done that today, and I've pulled up my, my bot code here, and so you can watch me, I'm just gonna walk through kind of the code that I've already written uh, to get us that adaptive card as a response to, to the bot. So here you can see we're declaring our adaptive card, we're rendering that with the data associated with it, um, I'm adding this to an attachment, and then that attachment gets sent as a result from the response from the bot. So let's go see what that looks like in action. So I'm gonna go back to our application. And in this context, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send this link to you so that we can collaborate in chat over a specific item in this dashboard. So I'm gonna click your avatar here. I'm gonna click follow up. This will launch a chat with me and you. And you can see that adaptive card pop up automatically with that link unfurling. I can send that to you. And now we can collaborate over chat and, uh, and get our work done inside of Teams. That's it. Fantastic. Thanks, Paul. So now in our final scenario, Ray wants to discuss the new product launch with his team in their weekly planning call. So he adds the Contoso app to the planning meeting via the app picker that you can see here. 
which opens this task module where he can select the dashboard of content that he wishes to share in the meeting. In this case, the new item that's being launched. And now the dashboard with all the relevant product information he wants to share is pinned to the meeting. And he also has a collaborative space here where he and his team can create launch readiness tasks, timeline milestones, and things like store plans. Okay, now in the call, Ray can use the Contoso app in the right pane adjacent to the call stage so that he can access all of the content he needs to share, but still keep his focus on his team during the call. He can share information on the product launch to the meeting by selecting share to meeting from the overflow menu here. And this shares the product information onto the call stage and enables his team to view the product and optionally add their own notes and comments. When they click on OK, the information is then stored with the meeting so it can be accessed after the meeting has ended. So Ray then wants to start creating tasks for the launch plan and so adds them to this collaborative table that you can see on the right hand side here that's been built with the Fluid SDK. And now his whole team can start adding tasks together and collaborating in real time. So then to make better use of the call stage and so he can share more information with his team, Ray selects the share to stage button which shares the full Contoso dashboard onto the stage enabling everyone on the call to see all of the information available. And finally, Ray wants to sketch out some ideas for the storefront, and so he shares this storefront designer from the Contoso app that's been built using the Microsoft Live Share, and now everyone on the call can start collaborating and sketching on the call stage in real time. And now, after the meeting, all of the work that Ray and the team did together on the call has now been saved and is available in the Contoso meeting tab, so that it can be accessed by all of the call participants after the call has ended, and they can then share this information more broadly across their tenant. So with that, I'm going to hand over to Paul for one last time to give us a demo of the meeting extension framework. Paul, take it away. Awesome. So I'm back in VS Code, and we're going to reuse a lot of the same code and the demo that we actually built today. We're just going to put it into that meeting context. And the easiest way to do that is inside of our manifest, we just add the chat tab, the side panel, and the stage context, and that's it. So now I'm going to switch over to a live meeting here with Alex. Nice to see you, Alex. And you can see that our application is in the toolbar at the top here in our, in our meeting. And when I click that, you can see that same application resizing, looking great, applying the right theme, uh, the right theme in this UI. And then with one click, like Alex talked about before, I can share that to the stage. And now Alex and I, we can be collaborative in this meeting and get our work done. So there you have it. Whether you're an ISV or an LLB developer, you have access to a whole bunch of Teams capability uh, here today. What did we talk about? We talked about message extensions, bots, Fluent UI React. We talked about tabs inside of chats, inside of channels. Is there anything else? Did I leave anything else out? I think the only thing I can think of is personal apps. OK. But yeah, great session. Thanks, everyone. And back over to you. Alex, Paul, thank you. This really shows the end-to-end -end solution opportunity with apps built on Microsoft Teams. Now let's showcase Atlassian, another key partner of ours. Atlassian has been deeply integrating with Teams with apps like Jira and Confluence, which represent some of the best ways of leveraging the Teams canvas. I'll actually let Steve Goldsmith from Atlassian talk about it. He joins us via Teams. Steve, thank you for the close partnership Atlassian has been one of the earliest partners on the Teams platform. Uh, do you mind sharing with all of us a little about your journey? Hey, it's great to be here with you as well, Bergu. For Atlassian, it's all about empowering teams to work the way they want in the tools that let them thrive, which leads Perfect. us Thank to you. build apps on best of green platforms like Teams. We've been building with you since the very beginning, investing to make sure our Atlassian products have a great experience in Teams. We've taken a few different approaches to building on the Teams platform, depending on the product maturity on our side. For existing products like Jira and Confluence, we're using customer insights to create a Teams app to extend and enhance that experience, kind of going back and rethinking our core products in the context of Teams. Separate, limited, but promising for us, products that natively use the Teams platform as the user experience for end users. Our product Help, which appears as an app called Assist in Teams, follows this pattern. And finally, for new products that we're launching, including things from our point A new product program, we're building a Teams app as part of that kind of V1 product spec for many products as we bring them to market. For example, Atlas, which we just launched, had, had a Teams app while it was still in beta. 
Regardless of the product maturity, though, we let customer experience guide how we prioritize and translate those capabilities into teams. So, Steve, that's pretty awesome. And again, I'm just sharing for everyone, like this journey you've been on, you've actually used applications, first built them just natively, then incorporated some of those key platform components, and then even brought new uh, apps and capabilities onto the team's platform. So could you share with us some of the usage patterns you're seeing around collaborative apps? For sure. Teams for us is, the, is kind of the new office, meaning it's the critical channel where work ultimately moves forward. Not just the structured meetings, but the kind of online hallway chats and impromptu huddle type conversations. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a surge in usage of our, our apps in Teams, which I attribute obviously to the complementary nature of our products. Uh, nearly 70% of the Fortune 500 companies use at least one Atlassian app within Teams last month. Wow. That's awesome. That, that yeah. is pretty, that's really cool. That's awesome. Thank you. So Atlassian apps are frequently the system of record for the current state of a project or yes. a repo or a knowledge base, something like that. Teams acts as a system of engagement to really extend that information out to where people are working. Right. Um, building apps in Teams allows for inclusive teams engagement, inclusive team engagement, <laughs> allowing contributors to take action or stay aware of a project or piece of work as it moves through the life cycle without having to switch apps. One example of this is the Confluence embedded pages that we just shipped. It brings the full editing experience of the Confluence editor into a Teams tab. This is the first time, actually, we've embedded this core functionality into a third-party product. So again, it's really um, uh, cool to see how you're reducing the friction for the users. And at the end of the day, our joint goal is to how do we empower the user to complete the task faster, to collaborate better, to get those decisions that need to get done so projects get done and, and they deliver impact. And so in this uh, case, what are the team's capabilities do you think they first leverage? And how's the feedback been? I would say generally our customers want both depth and flexibility in their apps, not right. just a surface level kind of connection. Um, that's why our apps have functionality across the multiple scopes of Teams, from chat to tabs to notifications to meetings. Uh, after the initial discovery of the app, we found that most users flock towards two main things. One is personal notifications. Customers are hungry to move that notification out of their inbox and work at the pace of chat in the place they're spending their day. We actually had a customer tell us that after adding the Jira app to Teams, he claimed he started to scare a few coworkers with how fast he responded to ticket updates because the Teams notifications are instant and could comment and update right from Teams. We, we found that that's not really the design goal of the product we were after to help employees scare each other's team members, but it's kind of funny. <laughs> that's, that the notification one is, uh, is, uh, is classic because uh, we see this all the time is notifications being a powerful um, ability to really drive that engagement and complete those tasks. Um, is there something around tabs that you could share before we get into the next uh, set of uh, thoughts here? Yeah, for sure. The, the other big one in addition to personal notifications was tabs and being able to pin that Trello board or, or Jira board or Confluence tab directly to a channel. Right. So the whole team has that shared context to everyone quickly and easily. Perfect, so true examples of collaboration, both driving async as well as synchronous collaboration with everyone with a shared context. So here you have a channel, you have the right people, you have the right content, you've got the applications, and you're able to make decisions faster without having to switch between and, and, uh, and have any of that friction. So um, I'm gonna change tracks a little bit from our customer experiences to more around your developers that built these collaborative applications on the Teams platform. So Steve, from an, from an Atlassian development team perspective, could you please speak to the ramp up journey on building the, on the Teams platform and then later on how we've been kind of grown over the years. But, but, but before you start, Steve, I'm gonna request, could you please keep your feedback to the last 18 months or so? Because I know we've been working together and if you go back four years, four and a half years, I'm a little worried because the platform is a little rough. We've made a lot of improvements. So over to you, Steve, if you could share how your developers are uh, experiencing the Teams platform. Thank you. Sure, and, and we've been happy to be a partner along the way here. We know that any new platform is an investment of time and energy. 
and really ex succeeds when that platform is embraced mm -hmm. and extended. We're committed to Microsoft Teams to ensure our customers can engage with the surface or product or workflow that works for them. Onboarding working Teams API, Graph API, and Bot Framework was a pretty big project for us due to the breadth of APIs available. Um, what's nice though is we're also learning as platform consumers and platform providers. So we're thinking about ways we can continue to offer Atlassian's flavor of collaborative apps and enable developers to lower the learning curve just like you all are. Steve, so we can keep learning from each other's platforms and programs. Steve, thank you very much for the continued partnership. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Brigitte, it's been great. And now, Karwana, back to you. All right, so much good stuff here. I love that part from Magoo about just the last 18 months. <laughs> that was great. Next, we're going to hear from Lumen, whose large citizen developer community uh, has built over 3,500 low-code apps and continue to add or develop applications directly in Microsoft Teams. Make sure to check it out, and we've got some great information for you right now. At Lumen, we're all about the next gen technology and connecting the consumer with what we're doing and with the business. We have smart people at Lumen. They come up with ideas. And if you don't provide them a platform, they figure out a way to do it themselves. And Teams is a great gateway for that. Teams is a fantastic platform for collaboration. But beyond collaboration, you can surface different power apps into your team solution. For our more experienced developers, the Power Platform removes a lot of the work that you have to do up front. There's also the ability to just quickly create your canvas and then move your code in behind it. I can just drag and drop. I have the ability now to actually go in and look at my power effects and I can see how all this actually flows. Another area is the API access to Dataverse. And we have the pro developer who's seeing what's happening there, and that's happening with our citizen developer and our maker, and now they're coming together. We've created 3,800 power apps and close to 8,500 flows with our makers at Lumen. The thing that I'm most proud of is this community that has just organically grown. It's this ability to support each other it's the best thing I've ever done in my career. So we've come to the final moments of this Interfocus, and here with us in studio is Carolyn Groh, the Chief Operating Officer at La Tobots. Welcome, Carolyn. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here today. So before we get into our conversation, I wanted to start by saying thank you, Carolyn, and thank you to La Toolbox. Um, I'm going to go back a little to the first Microsoft build back in 2017 for Microsoft Teams. And it was a special moment for me personally as we were sharing uh, the platform capabilities. And you were there and we met. And uh, I just wanted to start by saying we appreciate the partnership. Thank you. Thank you. It was such an exciting moment to be at that very first Teams roundtable. We had just uh, announced our Teams app, and that was right before Microsoft Teams was formally launched. Right. Uh, could you share with us uh, what Law Toolbox has built and uh, your journey? Absolutely. So our founder, a litigator, created Law Toolbox as the first online legal SaaS way back in 1998. Wow. <laughs> one, he had one goal in mind, and that was to reduce the risk of missed deadlines. And he did this in two ways. First, he created online legal calculators that auto-generated deadlines based on a library of the rules of procedure for regulatory and civil litigation deadlines. And of course, the second part was to get those deadlines into their, the, the attorney calendars, mm -hmm. the place where well over 90% of lawyers rely on to be reminded of their deadlines, of course, the yeah, Outlook calendar. Exactly. So, as, you're, as the lawyers are using your law toolbox yeah. and experiencing, and it seems like Outlook was working really, really well. So in addition, why a collaborative app on Microsoft Teams platform? Well, first off, our clients were explicit. They said, please don't make us learn a new tool or go to a new cloud. That's fair, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So our job was to solve their calendaring and collaboration needs but we needed to do it in the place that they had already invested their time and, and were familiar with and using right. every day. Right. So 
the bait, the bet that we placed was based on a response to a 2018 Forrester prediction that within five years, Microsoft Teams would become that place where people spend their day. So today, Law Toolbox is a matter management platform that is built on top of Microsoft Teams, SharePoint, and Outlook. Nice. And used inside of our customers' Microsoft 365 tenants. That's pretty cool. This, it really is. It's super fascinating, and especially for me, because legal technology is actually where I got my start in this business. So I really want to see this. Can we take a look? Absolutely. The Law Toolbox Personal Bot helps lawyers organize their work by projects called matters in the legal industry. They have the flexibility to create working groups to share a matter among colleagues across their team. The source of the matter is generally pulled in from a customer CRM like Salesforce, an accounting program, or a state and local government database, and connects via our API. On the back end, the Law Toolbox API calls to the Microsoft Graph API to create matters in Teams automatically. Law Toolbox offers Teams templates with pre-configured tabs, channels, folders, and files. We also allow our customers to pull in whatever they need, like e-signature or document automation, to ensure a team has what they need when they start a new matter. From the matter I selected in Outlook, clicking Teams Chat uses a deep link to jump users from Outlook directly to the Teams Chat for that matter. And here in the Teams tab on the toolbar, we see our pre-configured, templatized team with apps our clients need to get their work done. And in the left rail are the channels, files, and folders where they can organize their work. Now, using our bot-enabled messaging extension, users are able to select a matter in the Teams chat, which is then displayed in an adaptive card. This deep links to the individual matter, taking them to the automated calendar for that team. Powered by Law Toolbox's rules-based calendaring library for administrative or regulatory timelines. I love this. It is such a great example of the continuity of technology and how it can really impact people's experience. Agreed. Uh, it's embracing people and helping get the job done efficiently. Could you share your thoughts around security, information pr protection, and the compliance uh, considerations? Yes, as, as you can imagine, there's a hyper sensitivity around security and privacy. Yes for the legal community and state and local governments. So because our product lives inside of Microsoft 365's platform, Law Toolbox inherits the Microsoft 365 data governance and records retention policies for free. And mm -hmm. we and our clients are benefiting from a level of security that we could never build on our own. You know, it's really, all about peace of mind. It's, it's the peace of mind for our customers, but it's also peace of mind for us. Right, and so changing tracks a little bit, uh, first, thank you for sharing your experiences. Yep. There's one feature that we shipped back in October, and that was the ability to have uh, ISVs or developers have a uh, SaaS offer that could be purchased right from either the Teams store or from the Teams admin center, and Law Toolbox actually integrated the capability. And so I'm curious, uh, what has been the feedback and how have organizations responded to the integration of this capability? It's been awesome. Our customers nice. have, yeah, I mean, truly, they have told us that it is, they just really appreciate how much easier it is to very quickly get approval, um, not have to go through the, the uh, the PO process, a purchase order process, and they can go straight to purchasing and then managing their Law Toolbox 365 licenses nice. in the exact same way that they're managing their Microsoft 365 licenses. Um, and, and speaking of purchasing, we've actually seen our licensing revenue double in the last several months. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. That's great. <laughs> It is great, it is great, and it's a seamlessness of experience that we mm -hmm. really strive for. So, you know, this means if any of you are really excited to get the Law Toolbox app in your office or Office of General Counsel Org, you or your Teams admin can buy it directly through the Teams App Store or the Teams Admin Center. 
Exactly. And and when you combine that direct by process that I just talked about right. with the uh, the option to to partner and leverage the Microsoft ecosystem of 100,000 Microsoft partners, right. our ability to scale and grow reaches an entirely new level. And, and Brigo, you talked earlier about those $100 million partners. Million dollar. I, I'm <laughs> sorry, the million dollar She's partners. She's seeing into the future, that's all. That's hey, just into the future. They might or might not be 100 million, but <laughs> yeah. that slide. 100 million, yeah. yes. That is a million dollar annual recurring revenue slide, yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, we're gonna get there. And we actually um, got some exciting news last night. Okay. We heard that our April licensing revenue quadrupled March. Uh, Whoa. So I think I think we're going to get there a lot sooner than so, we expected. So Carwana, when we were talking earlier, yeah. like last week when we were prepping for this, yes. I had not heard that stat. That's great. See, and this is a live reveal it right is, here on the show. We like that. I was we gonna, like that. I was going to worry for a second because <laughs> Carolyn's like, I got some data last night. And I'm like, oh, feature request, feature request. <laughs> but, but okay, that, that, uh, that is awesome. Thought. Yes. And, you know, honestly, we're, we're, we're going to get there. And we believe that being part of the Microsoft team store and that that buying process is like really key to helping us get there faster. Absolutely. Carolyn, it's so great to reconnect with you. Thank you very much again for the close partnership, continually giving us feedback, making our platform even better. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It's been, it's been lovely to be here today. It's a great story, and I, I just love the history, right? These partnerships are about people and what we can do together. So thank you so much again. And thank you, Rigo. You know, it's always good to spend some time with you. <laughs> Absolutely. Carolina, thank you. <laughs> so, you know, here we are. Um, I am very enthusiastic about what happens here because you can see the direct impact that it has on people, on their businesses, and on the careers that are out there. This is exactly what we're trying to talk about here at Microsoft Build. So whomever you are, maybe you're a new business user who's just coming into this or a new developer. Maybe you're a pro developer who's been here for a really long time or you're an ISV or a partner who's thinking up new product spaces. That's exactly what we want you to do. Think about this, dream this up with us, and then dive in to the skilling that we have for you so that you can make it a reality like the folks we showed you today. That does it for Into Focus on collaborative apps. Personally, as you can tell, I'm so inspired. There's been so much that's happened here at Microsoft Build uh, over the course of the two days. Uh, I'm always inspired listening to Satya speak about those 10 key themes. Um, I watched that again. I encourage you to watch that again because it'll help you orient on everything that's going on. We've talked here about the metaverse, about the power of low code, no code. Uh, we've talked about AI, and now we're talking about collaborative apps. And so these things, these themes are coming together, right? So again, the opportunity for you is to dive into the technology, put your hands on the keyboard, unleash yourself, break free as we talk about uh, so that you can realize the benefits of this for yourself, for your career, for your community, and for your organization. It doesn't matter if you're brand new to this or a seasoned pro. You can build collaborative apps and also take advantage of all of the other things that we've talked about here on Into Focus and at Microsoft Build. It is possible right now today. Microsoft has provided the ecosystem, the support, and the tools to make it happen. You heard me talk about community earlier. Dive in there as well. So to learn more about what we've covered today, here are some resources. For collaborative apps, you can see this link on the screen. You can put your hands on the keyboard at the App in the Day workshop at AIAD event. Um, you can continue your learning journey in the Microsoft 365 community with our dev calls. And lastly, stay up to date on all of our news at the Microsoft 365 developer blog. I'm Karawana Gatimu. I am always privileged and lucky to be your host for Into Focus and to participate in Microsoft Build. I hope you have a great one. See you soon.